Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to Structure Free Learning. And in this video, we're going to do our first influence lines example problem where I'm given this cantilever beam. It's fixed at end A and it's free at end C. And point B is just a point along the length of the beam. It's not a hinge. And what we want to do in this problem is find the influence line for the reaction at the moment reaction at A, the vertical reaction at A, the influence line for the internal shear at point B, as well as the internal moment at point B. And this is an introductory example using Mueller Bress law principle. And so we're going to do it in excruciating detail. And what the Mueller Bress law principle says is that the influence line is the deflected shape of a beam when an action is removed, then replaced by a unit displacement or rotation. So the approach I try to take when I solve these influence line problems using the Mueller Bress law principle is to first draw the structure undeformed with the action removed. So essentially what you're doing is releasing the restraint and drawing the structure. Next, you're going to apply a unit displacement or rotation depending on whether you're removing a force or a moment and draw that deflected shape associated with that unit displacement or rotation. And usually with a statically determinate structure and you're doing influence lines for it, it and you use Miller Bress law principle, usually they're just a bunch of rigid body motions for the different segments. And you'll see what I mean by that. Then third, I like to calculate values based purely on geometry. And lastly, I like to redraw the influence line nice and neat. Non-homeless, if you will. <laughs> now, before we do anything, I like drawing in my reactions. And I also like to put or remind myself what positive internal loading sign convention I am using here. So I'm just going to use a typical one, which is, boom. So if I make a cut through a member and I look on the inside of the member, see on the left side of the cut, I have a positive internal shear going downwards, positive shear going upwards, moment causing compression at the top, and normal forces causing tension. And this is what I will call my positive sign convention. So the first thing I'm going to do is calculate the influence line for a moving concentrated load along this length here for the moment reaction at A. So the first thing I do is draw the undeformed structure with this moment reaction removed. If I remove the moment here, I have essentially a pin because I only have vertical and horizontal reactions available at point A. And this beam will now look like this with my moment at A removed. Then next, I'm going to apply that unit displacement or rotation and draw the deformed shape. So, you know, this is really one and two together. In this case, I'm going to apply a unit rotation. And the direction of that rotation is important. And here, because we drew our moment reaction going this way or uh, clockwise, we want to make sure that that rotation is also clockwise. So here we're going to introduce a rotation of one going clockwise. Imagine this beam had no supports. So if it were just a beam here, this rotation would just be going like this clockwise. You know, you would take this display shape and move it like this. Okay, this is what that, that blue line would be what that display shape looks like. But in this structure here, you have this pin holding point this end here, holding it zero. So you've got to make sure this moves back down and remains or it satisfies the boundary conditions that are imposed here. So our deformed shape with this unit rotation will look like this. Bam. This rotation right here, this angle is equal, this theta, we'll call this theta, is equal to 1. And now we're ready to calculate values just using basic geometry. And the thing you have to remember when you calculate deformations or, or this deflected shape used for influence lines is that the small angle assumption is still true which means that this cosine of theta is approximately 1, sine of theta is approximately theta, and tangent theta is approximately theta. All right, so here we know the length of my beam is, is 10 meters. And that means the value of this distance, which I'll call, I'll call that y1, y1 is equal to length times theta. So that would just be 10 meters times, and that means y1 is equal to 10 meters. 
Now, I know that seems kind of crazy, but really, if you think about it, you know, the, if you have a concentrated load here of, of one newton, then you expect that this moment reaction should be 10 newton meters. And in fact, if I go any distance, so if, even if I went five meters, if this were five meters here, this would be five, this value would be five meters, and so on and so forth. You know, right in between, this would be 7.5 meters. And here, a quarter of the distance would be 2.5 meters. And if you look at this, the influence line is really just a multiplier for a unit concentrated load moving across the the beam and it tells you exactly what the moment is at A. So now I want to just go ahead and redraw the influence line nice and clean. You notice these values are actually negative. These should be negative because they're below the x-axis and if we say that displacement upwards is positive, this influence line will look like this. This is negative 10 and that's the influence line for the concentrated moment at A.